If you're a FERS employee, you have various retirement options that are available to you. In this video, we're going to cover one of the retirement options that may allow you to retire at a slightly younger age and with fewer years of service. That's coming up, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jerrell Harvey with Federal Financial, and this is The Money Briefing. If you're new to this channel, we cover topics related to personal finance, federal benefits, and retirement planning. So if you find this video helpful, please consider sharing and subscribing. One of the technology features that I love to use when watching TV is the pause button on the remote control. The pause button is very helpful if I'm interrupted while watching TV or if I just wanna take a break to do something else. With the pause button, I can temporarily stop the program, then resume the program at a time that's more convenient for me. And in some ways, postponing your first retirement works similar to the pause button on your remote control. If your life is interrupted by some unexpected situation, or if you just wanna leave the federal government to do something else, the postponed retirement option allows you to separate from federal service and temporarily postpone the starting date of your pension. So in other words, you will press the pause button on your pension and your other federal benefits, then later start those benefits at a time that works better for you. But there are some requirements and stipulations that you must meet to qualify for a postponed retirement. In order to do a postponed retirement, you must wait until you're eligible for the MRA plus 10 retirement. The MRA plus 10 of retirement requires that you have at least 10 years of credible service before you separate from the federal government. Those 10 years must include five years of civilian service. Additionally, you must be at least your minimum retirement age when you separate from service. Your minimum retirement age or MRA depends on your birth year and it can range between the ages of 55 and 57. Now, some people may be wondering, why would I want to postpone the start of my retirement pension if I can immediately begin receiving a pension payment? The primary reason is to minimize or eliminate the age reduction penalty. When you retire under the MRA plus 10 provision, your pension is permanently reduced if it starts before age 62. The age reduction is based on a monthly percentage that equals 5% per year. So as an example, Let's consider DOL Lisa. She is thinking about leaving federal service in five years when she reaches her minimum retirement age of 57. At that time, Lisa will have 16 years of credible service based on her projected high three average salary of 112,500. Lisa will be entitled to receive an unreduced annual pension of $18,000 or $1,500 on a monthly basis. If Lisa immediately starts her pension at 57, her benefit would be permanently reduced by 25% since there's a 5% reduction for every year that she's under age 62. This 25% reduction lowers Lisa's pension by 4,500 and leave her with a gross annual pension of 13,500 or 1125 per month. Lisa will receive this payment until she reaches age 62 when she becomes eligible for cost of living adjustments to her pension. Instead of taking this reduction, Lisa could choose to postpone her retirement, which will reduce or eliminate the age reduction penalty. She can choose to start her pension at any date between her MRA and two days before her 62nd birthday. If she postpones her retirement, the age reduction will decrease based upon how close she is to her 62nd birthday. So basically, the longer Lisa postpones the start of her pension, the larger her pension will be. If Lisa starts the pension after reaching age 62, the reduction is totally eliminated. Even though the chart shows the reduction in whole numbers and whole years, it's important to remember that the age reduction decreases every month that you delay the start of your pension. I also want to point out that there's one exception to the age reduction rule. If you have at least 20 years of credible service and begin your pension after reaching age 60, then the age reduction is also eliminated. Under the postponed retirement, one of the main drawbacks is that you have to temporarily give up your FDHB insurance. 
Begley Insurance, and Dental and Vision Insurance. However, your insurance coverages will be reinstated when your pension payments begin. But the temporary suspension of benefits, especially with FEHB, could present a costly challenge if you don't have health insurance through a spouse's plan or with another health insurance plan such as TRICARE. Some other things to know or consider with the postponed retirement involves your annual leave, sick leave, and thrift savings plan. You will receive a lump sum payment for your annual leave hours at the time of separation. Your unused sick leave hours will be converted to credible service and will be used in your pension calculation. Additionally, with the postponed retirement, the earliest that you can separate is age 55. Therefore, because of the rule of 55, you can take plenty free withdrawals from your traditional TSP account after you separate for civilian service. The form to initiate the start of your pension is form RI-92-19. You should file it directly with OPM about two to three months before you want your pension to begin. There are some benefits of postponing your first retirement, especially if you want to avoid the age reduction penalty to your pension while still enjoying life outside of the federal government. If you received any value from this video, please click the like button. You can also subscribe to our channel to get more content like this. Additionally, if you have any comments or questions about personal finance, federal benefits, or retirement planning, you can add them in the comment section below, or you can contact us by visiting www.fedwayfinancial.com. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next Money Briefing.